Welcome listeners to the Speaking From Our Pot, Speaking From Our Hearts podcast episode. Slow down, Paul, slow down. <laughs> and uh, today I'm joined by a, a lady from France called Patricia, Patricia Brooks. Blimey, my tongue is in a mess this morning. Let me take a, let me take a sip of water. It's calmed things down a bit here. Ah, okay. So uh, today, Patricia, uh, well, first of all, Patricia, a very, very warm welcome to you. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. And uh, today we're going to be talking about, well, a number of things, I believe, Patricia, amongst uh, No Regrets. Uh, you've got a new book coming out called Live a Bold Life and also a podcast called Discovering Courage. So we've got, uh, we've got one or two bits and pieces to start us off with. So uh, do you want to just start by telling us a little bit about yourself and your journey? Yeah, I um, feel like I have grown bold. And that is kind of interesting for me because I felt that I had been a shy, introverted person. I was a homebody. I never wanted to, um, I was homesick when I went away to college. I never wanted to travel to Europe. And here now I'm living in France. And so that is my journey, a uh, journey into discovering my courage and my boldness. And it really came out of, after my father died, I realized that I was just going through the motions in life. I had a good life, I had a good job, and a very nice house, but I was just unhappy, I was miserable. And after my father died, who, you know, when he died, I realized that he was the strongest man I knew, he was my superhero, and that if my superhero could die, then I would die. And did I wanna die just living the life that I'd been living? And so, the answer was no. <laughs> and so I started doing things differently. I started showing up differently. I showed up um, giving 100% to everything I did, including that job that I hated. And things started to turn around for me. Uh, things started to flow for me. And it was then that things started to change in my life. I went on to go on to coach training. I did a lot of inner work on myself. And my first or second trip to France, actually, I was traveling alone and I asked myself the question, how, Patricia, are you traveling all by yourself to a foreign speaking country? How is this possible? And I heard the answer loudly and clearly, and that was, you are growing bold. And I was lying down in bed at that moment and I sat bolt upright. I wrote that down and I said, that is the title of my first book. And so, you know, here, here I am living a, a life that really kind of surprises me, but I'm so happy that I, I took this journey. Wow. Interesting when you speak about the, the dying aspect, Patricia. Um, is it Robbins that quotes, uh, by definition, if we're not growing, we're dying. And yes. isn't it true that most of us have that concept of death in, is when we leave this physical body? We, we look at it as we're born, life starts, we die, life stops. And it's that very kind of black and white perception of, of what we know as life, isn't it? Yeah, and I think you make a really good point that if we're not growing, we're dying. I got to a point where I felt that dying inside and mm -hmm. it didn't feel good. It was enough to make me make some changes, make me do the tough internal work, the inner work, that's so hard to do when you look at the things you've done and, and, what you've, and, and the things that are uncomfortable to look at. Um, that's hard. But when you're faced with dying inside, um, I had no alternative. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, as I say, it's very interesting to have that concept and that insight and, and, and go on that journey. And just to bring in your point there, uh, Patricia about that stark realization of what I call look in the mirror moments wow is this what I've become is this who I am now yes mm, okay but I think better uh, Patricia the the stark action to take on the realization that yes this is you know where I've where I've come in my life rather than that slow drip 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 the Chinese torture of um, that slow death you know, that yeah. short, sharp shock treatment of that realization, wow, I need to wake up here and do something. It's better, I, I, I believe, than that, as I say, dying slowly. 
Yeah, and I think one of the problems that people face when they may feel like something's not right, that they, there's got to be more to life than what they're living. I think the problem that a lot of people face is they're afraid of the change um, that it will take to discover what life is really about. And so that's what I do. You know, it's my mission really to help as many people as possible to work through their fears so that they can do and experience the things that have has most meaning for them so that they don't get to the end of their life uh, feeling regret or wonder what would have been or what could have been if only I had. Yeah. Yeah. And that is, I think that is a question of courage, really, uh, as you say, Patricia, isn't it? So I think that leads us nice, nicely into your, um, into your podcast, which I believe is called um, Discovering Courage. Yes. For the benefit of the listeners, do you want to share, I mean, not necessarily names or details, but some of the kind of key conversations you've had because the, the podcast in media is phenomenally powerful and we get such rich insights and and learning from from conversations with, with other people i mean that's the essence of speaking from our hearts really uh, yeah. just want to share one or two of those uh, courageous yeah. insights Patricia. yeah I, absolutely and you say, when you ask me that you know one pops to my mind um because I actually dedicated my, this book that's coming out on June 18th to him. Um, his name was John Hunt. And he, you know, lived a very powerful, uh, purpose-filled life. Mm -hmm. He, I interviewed him at uh, the end of June last year. And he had earned his, he, he's blind, he was blind. Um, he lost his sight after um, an accident. Um, he was in the military and he earned his black belt in karate uh, six months earlier. And he was getting ready to ride the entire East Coast of the United States from Maine to Florida um, by, by, on bicycle, tandem bicycle um, in August. And so I interviewed him at the end of June and he didn't see he had gone down the path of feeling like a victim of his circumstances, um, having been um, blinded and, and had several bad car accidents, but he got to this point where he felt like he was dying inside and he had to do something different. And so he got off all of the, the antidepressants he was on and he took back control of his life. Mm -hmm. And this episode is, was so powerful to me because I always start off by asking, what do you think is most important for listeners to know about you? And he said that I, that, that I really enjoy helping people. And the last question I asked him was to share, you know, is always, what do you want to leave listeners with? And he says, just enjoy life. And so I had interviewed him on the end, at the end of June. His episode was airing um, the third week in July. And I called him that week to get a little bit of additional information uh, for his bio, because I told him I would write it for him. And I asked him if he had a couple of minutes to, to you know, talk to me so I could get that information. He's like, oh, no, not really. I'm in a charity ride on the West Coast of the United States. And so we're, in, we're just taking a break, so I don't really have time. I said, well, what about tomorrow? Oh, no, we're continuing this charity bike ride. I said, what about the day after? He's like, no. I said, okay. Let, let me ask you these, two, these couple of quick questions so I can get this information. So that was Sunday. Um, on Tuesday, I started uh, promoting the episode on Facebook, uh, saying you've got to listen to this one. It's one you, you um, have to, you won't believe. And by Tuesday afternoon, our karate in instructor was telling me that he had died. He had a, had a, a fatal heart attack while riding in that charity ride. Um, and he had died. And so I was announcing his death on Facebook and I couldn't believe it because he had said what he loved, what he loved, what people need to know about him is that he loves helping people. He was riding in this charity race, helping people. And he was doing exactly what he loved doing, uh, this physical challenge. And he was enjoying his life. And the last words that he had said on my podcast were, were just enjoy life. And so for me, that that podcast changed me, changed me completely. And 
I know that the listeners of that podcast um, have been um, astounded by it as well. Wow. Interesting word there. Uh, my Everything always lights up in me when I hear this word, Patricia, purpose. What would you say your purpose is? Ah. I believe it is to really help people gain clarity on what it is that they don't want to have regrets about mm -hmm. and, and help them work through their fears, create a plan so that they can experience um, their purpose and feel how good it feels to be in that space where you you can't even imagine what it feels like it, it's 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 unreal to to get people to that place to get get people to that place where i am now where i'm feeling like um am i dreaming uh this feels really good i don't know what's next but you know what i'm i'm trusting in the universe that uh that it will be good yeah mm -hmm. so i think that that's my purpose trust faith mm -hmm. and within that Patricia so yeah I mean just just listening to you there my mind's kind of all over the place as I say trust <laughs> faith and it brings in so many things doesn't it let me ask you this question and and I want to try if, if you'll allow me to play devil's advocate and as podcast hosts as you know we shouldn't be allowed uh, we shouldn't be asking closed questions should we apparently no. according to the, the no. podcast <laughs> <laughs> Do not ask closed question. Yeah, okay. But I want to ask you a closed question. <laughs> and uh, a little bit of method in my madness, so just bear with me. Um, and it's this, because we can expand on it in a, in a more open way later. But the closed question, Patricia, is this. Do you believe that life is a very simple game? Hmm. Yes, and <laughs> <laughs> I, knew, I knew it would be a yes, but or maybe I knew it. Great, <laughs> fantastic. Yes, and you know one of the one of the values that I hold dear, one of the ideas that I hold dear is that I don't believe that life is meant to be a struggle. And when I say struggle, that's effort laced with negative emotion. Ah, oh, I got to do this, and it's such a grind, and ah, oh. yeah. I don't believe that. And so that's the reason I say yes to your, your question. However, <laughs> <laughs> we, we do things to, to make, life, make the game not so simple, mm -hmm. to make life a struggle. And I think, that's, I think that's, the, that's our journey in life, is to get to that place where we recognize that when we rely on our intuition, when we rely on that source of faith that we have and know that things will be okay, that things flow and mm -hmm. life is a simple game and there is much less struggle. And when you get to that place, it's just, it's just so freeing. Mm -hmm. Isn't it true, Patricia, that we as people, um, we're just energy, aren't we? Yes. We're just energy, and energy by definition cannot be destroyed. It can change its state, but it can't be destroyed. And I think it's just some basic insights about communicating this message to, to the outside world around, you know, okay, we have a physical form at the moment called a body. We have something called a mind. And we have our perceptions, which um, you know our five our five senses. But they they're transient; they come and go. And obviously, as we alluded to, Patricia, at the top of this conversation around you know how how things move on, and you know this this dying thing. We're born, we die, and there's this whole kind of space in between where we, you know, oh, life's a struggle. Why is it always me in this? And I think one of the things that I've come to know um, along my own journey is this understanding that as energy, as particles that's revolving around so transient within this universe, 
that that's it. And we get so wrapped up in our own self-importance that it's me versus the world. Well, you are the world. You are part of it. And I think just that subtle understanding that actually, and I think the certainly the phrase in, in the UK is just get over yourself. Because in the grand scheme of things, you're not nowhere near as critical in this world as you think you are. Yeah. Yeah. The the contradiction on that is we're totally unique and we are massively significant. And so there's a there's this duality as well, isn't there? This you know, day, night, short, long, you know, this whole kind of well, duality that exists within our world. So I think that's a very interesting insight for me to, to share, Patricia, that, you know, we are immensely significant, but let's put that significance in context of this grand cosmos. And it's not just about Earth, it's about the whole energetic cosmos, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. When we look who we are, within that grand scheme and the way nature unfolds and you know the whole process of just let it be let it breathe because let it flow because it's going to anyway whether you like it or not (laughs) you know let's not let's introduce that word ego because i think we've done well to get sort of 10 15 minutes in without mentioning the e word (laughs) nice introduction here patricia but this ego does step in, doesn't it? And starts to dominate and want control. And I want to make sense of my world. Well, actually, it's not your world. Yeah, I think you make a good point about, you know, everything's energy, we're energy. And how the other big point you made was that we aren't as significant as we think we are, but we're really significant. Yeah. <laughs> and I think you know, you bring in ego as well. I think when we, when we have the self-importance and we are only looking out for ourselves or we only can see how things impact or affect us, then that's when we are, when we have a lot of fear, when we are trying to protect ourselves, when we are not part of the, <laughs> this universe um, and, and, the, and the oneness of the universe. But as we expand and grow, and I think that my, my moving out of the United States was a huge learning for me because that helped me to open myself up to recognize how, I say small I was, but that, you know, America isn't the only thing. But while I was living there, you know, oh yes, it's the center of, of the world, right? But I move here and I meet so many new and different people and I recognize that I am not as important as I thought I was. And in doing that, I am able to see that and also begin to start helping more and more people, recognizing how when I get out of my own way, when I get over myself, that my purpose and life have greater meaning. Mm. I think we get to a stage, Patricia, do we not, where we actually realise that, you know, hitherto, I've been a legend in my own goldfish bowl. Yeah. We, yes. we swim round in this water of self-importance and, and, and that's it, isn't it? But the reality is, well, actually, that's a small goldfish bowl, a bit like probably this glass. But beyond that is actually there's a swimming pool out there and then there's a river and then there's an ocean. And you know what? There's this, just this whole expanse of energy. I think when, as I say, when you put it in that context, it, uh, it opens your eyes a bit. Absolutely. Um, and I mean, I think I see my transformation from that shy introverted person who was just going through the motions. Um, you know, part of that transformation was around getting out of my, my own head and my own self-importance and um, experiencing different things and and new things and actually being grateful for what I had because I'd been, you know, jumping from one job to the next job, looking for this, this happiness yet wasn't, didn't see all that I had to be grateful for. Mm -hmm. And by looking at other people and what they, um, what they don't have helped me to, also move you know away from ego um, and into this higher self where you know I could find my purpose and I could move through my fears and do things that 
now help many other people. Mm. On that, um, yeah, I mean, we'll kind of just temporarily, if we can, Patricia, park the ego thing, because there's this great mileage and conversation in that. So let, let's just park that one temporarily. But I want to come back and sort of focus on this duality theme that exists in all our lives. And I want to set the scene with that by, uh, if I may, using my own platform of my past experiences, which were very stark, very challenging, very dark. You know, I'm talking about addiction. I'm talking about violence. I'm talking about suicide attempts. I'm talking about labels such as depression etc 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 so i certainly come from what i term the coal face of life the real the real sort of part of reality mm-hmm. and i i just introduced that that sort of concept or that idea or that experience that story call it what you will patricia because it's not important i'm not attached to any of that but i use that to sort of say okay in this duality that we speak about the opposite of that is and it leads me nicely into my next question what signs do we look for from the universe to say that and i will say she and i do get challenged on giving the universe agenda but that's my ownership and uh, i'm more than happy to have that conversation another time another place with whoever um but when she gives us signs to say yeah you're on the right path well, what's your thoughts around these signs? And I've, you know, I've got one or two more sort of dig a bit deeper on that, but uh, I'm interested in your views on that, Patricia. I, well, I definitely, there are signs. <laughs> I agree with that. And, you, and I think everybody gets them. I think that the challenge is that we are so busy, you know, in this life, in this physical body, in this rat race, Mm. trying to get more and more and more and do more and, you know, show up more on Facebook um, that we can't hear it. We can't feel it. We can't sense it. And when we do hear it, because it it is shouting at us because it's like, okay, I gave you a small signal and a smaller one and a smaller one. And sometimes the the signals are not necessarily happy ones, right? There are things that shake us into recognizing I have to change something. Um, but we can't, we can't hear, we can't hear or feel them um, because we're so busy doing and going. Now, so for me, I absolutely believe in these signals. And for me, for me I call it intuition. And I am living in France, you know, in the town that I'm living in based on a hit of intuition. I knew in 2016, I knew I wanted to move to France, but I didn't know where. And I would read in a guidebook uh, about this town called Perpignan. It's in the south, uh, west of France. And, I, and Salvador Dali called it the center of the universe. And I'm like, oh, the train station there, the center of the universe. And I said, I wanna, I wanna go check out this place. So I was in Toulouse, I took a two hour train ride to Perpignan to check it out. And it was a gray drab day, it was chilly in May. And I got out of the train station, which is just a regular old train station, nothing special about it. And I started walking down this palm tree lined street. And I had this overwhelming sense of freedom. I was just like, ah. Oh. And the image that popped into my mind was a really strange one. The mo- you know the movie, The Silence of the Lambs? Mm. Okay, so I, it, it's the scene where Hannibal Lecter has escaped. And he has called uh, Jodie Foster, Agent Starling, to tell her that, you know, he's not going to call on her. The world's just more beautiful with you in it. And he hangs up the phone and he walks off into the distance. He's wearing this straw hat. You know, there, it's a tropical place he's at. And I thought to myself, as I'm feeling this overwhelming sense of freedom, I thought to myself, this, how I'm feeling, this is how Hannibal had to feel. And in that instant, I knew this is where I needed to be. So Mm. that is, that's a, that was a a signal that I could not ignore. It made no sense. You know, there are not a lot of jobs here. You know, what was I going to do? But I knew that I had to get back there. And so, yes, signals from the universe are really important. We can't hear them. 
<laughs> sometimes, but sometimes they scream at us. I want to share, and the reason I've painted that contrasting uh, duality scenario, Patricia, is this, and this was this morning, and the date, you know, for the purpose of this podcast is, is kind of irrelevant, but it was literally a couple of hours before this conversation. As I went out um, to put some rubbish outside, on the table was a white feather. Okay. Now, you know, what I'm saying is, I think it's about raising awareness for what are these little signs and angel numbers when I look at the clock and it's 11 11 yes. little things like that and when I go back to my previous as, as I do when I go back to the UK to my previous um, where, where I was born and bred and I talk to the guys and girls about this they think I'm absolutely crackers and I've lost my mind they think I've been smoking some of those uh, what they call funny folks with that marijuana in and all that kind of stuff. Um, but well, I, I don't. <laughs> no, but that's why I sort of took a couple of minutes, Patricia, to paint that reality of the foundation to say, look, I'm not some some guy that's come from from Mars that does smoke the funny fags and I'm away with the theories. This is hard nosed reality. Absolutely. And it's reality that, as I said, that many of us can't see because we're so blinded by, you know, ego, our life or whatever is going on at that moment. But you seeing that white feather, that had that meant something to you. Yes. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So let's get focused on our friend, the the ego. Um, What was your how would you describe ego, Patricia? What does that mean to you, that word? Ah, ego. Well, I would say that ego is that part of us that is, <laughs> it's about self-protection, it's about winning, it's about um, even uh, lack of compassion for others. Right. I think it's it's all about focused on me, me, me. Yeah. How can I, you know, stay safe? How can I be happy? How what can I what are the things that I can do to protect myself and and, and sustain myself? Mm. So that's how I would define it. And I think it's not necessarily always a bad thing. It's when it's when we neglect other people when we think that we are we are all that is important when we um don't recognize that we are part of this bigger um, universe um that it it really is a problem yeah i think it needs to know its place as a player on the playing field of awareness yes it's a, it's a part of awareness and so long as we've got that overview and that I think for me that brings in the higher self to be able to essentially look down you know because I class my, my ego and my mind and I know there's a subtle difference uh, well it's a big difference but I class them as my, my best friend because they're a part of me but they're not me tail and dog so in, in the context of that metaphor tail does not wag dog dog right tail and so the higher self which is me the dog Mm -hmm. i wag my ego or on the few instances when it's starting to be the other way around because i'm a human being i think because of my awareness i've learned to catch it and it is that awareness isn't it patricia yes i and i love that analogy the when it, it's the opposite way, way around and that tail starts, you know, wagging me, uh, I have that awareness to say, well, wait a minute, something's not right here. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that, that's, that's an interesting one. Interesting, I like, I like something that you said about five minutes or so ago about sort of showing up on Facebook or words to that effect. Yes. And, that, <laughs> and I just throw this out there. I've got no sort of... Uh, attachment to it other than to just throw it out there and see what your thoughts are but uh, when when, da- when uh, Wayne Dyer quotes the Tao Te Ching and there's this um, one of one of the 81 verses I can't remember which one it is Patricia but uh, it's something along the lines that those that know 
do not speak and i kind of just throw that in there because maybe i'm being a bit too subjective but this social media thing and facebook and all this it's kind of expected these days isn't it that you know that, that people are going to be on there and with the thoughts the quotes and you know and, and i understand that to a certain level but when i when i hear um wayne dyer's and i, and I love wayne dyer personally i think his, his, his material is ah. is yeah um but when i hear that and i think mm, okay paul and i actually know intuitively that that's another level of the higher self that i certainly aspire to be at so it just brings in this whole duality yet again of okay be still be quiet words are not needed and then i rush off and post on facebook <laughs> <laughs> well, and the thing is, you know, I, I think that that's a great, um, you know, we talk about the, the tail wagging the dog, yeah. and I, you know, it feels like to me, Facebook, you know, it has its benefits, but that it has its downfall. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for me, I know that when I'm, you know, in the midst of a marketing campaign and I'm posting a whole lot, I can feel that pull of the ego, right? Okay. Because I start looking to the likes and I'm like, and that starts to to change my mood and i and so it's really you know this duality as you say yeah there's the, the benefit to it and people think some of the things i share can help people but on the other side if i get too attached to <laughs> the likes then i can spiral down and it's not good <laughs> when we talk about the ego Patricia, is it not to say, you know, I mean, I've kind of already shared that from a higher perspective, my best friend, my tail, if you will, to use, you know, continue that metaphor, is, is the mind. And obviously part of the mind is the ego. But isn't it fair to say that, and this is going back to that question earlier on about, is life a very simple game? Isn't, is it or isn't it a question and a simple choice of love? versus fear or am i oversimplifying it it's yes it's a simple it's a, it's a simple choice of love versus fear but it's not so simple to to get to that understanding that realization that it's it's that black and white and or even to know that someone has it that they feel they have a choice Mm -hmm. Right. Someone who feels like they need to protect themselves and they need to get, get, get. Um, and they have that fear. They a lot of times don't know that they have the choice of love and that love is the answer, that love will solve the problems that they're facing. So, yes, it's, it's a simple question of, of or choice of love versus fear, but it's not so simple in knowing that you have that choice. Um, and it's or that it's that black and white but isn't that the role and the responsibility of practitioners like ourselves patricia to get that message out there oh yeah absolutely absolutely i, I agree 100 percent. and to contradict the eminent dr wayne wayne dyer are we maybe not shout you know are we being too silent maybe we need to shout louder because my my understanding is that this world at this moment in time is crying out for change it is absolutely desperate for change more than i can ever re recollect now maybe that's because my sensitivity and my own awareness is being yeah. heightened dramatically yeah. as time goes on because i'm seeing things i'm noticing white feathers i'm noticing that the clock says 11 11 or 22 22 or whatever it might be um oh eight dot oh eight you know all these all these signs and there are many um so maybe it's me that's changing and undoubtedly it is me that's changing but i know from the countless conversations i have with people patricia that the world is definitely changing as well definitely absolutely it is and i think um do we need to shout a little bit louder um i don't know you know i think that it, when people are ready for us, they will hear us. And I don't know that we'll need to shout. Um, I think definitely I hear what you're saying about being, you know, seeing that being more sensitive as you've grown, because uh, I feel that too. And it feels 
a lot of things that are going on, especially in the United States, don't feel good. It's like, what is going on? It feels like we, we're we kind of going back in time. And yet I feel like we're doing what we can do. And that do we need to shout a, bit a, lot, a little bit louder? I'm not so sure. Okay, so I consider myself challenged and I'll revert. <laughs> I'll revert back to, um, yet again, Dr. Dyer's stance, that that quietness, that... So if we're not going to speak with our words, maybe we need to speak with our actions. And maybe yes. that energy that we emit through being in somebody's presence and not speaking, but just a simple arm around the shoulder, just a simple eye contact, whatever that energy, that affirmation is to that person to say, actually, I'm with you. I hear you. Yeah. Yeah. And I would say, yeah, absolutely to that because people might not be ready for what we have to share with them, but they can get definitely gain something from that, that touch or that energy that they, they, they feel they're not alone. So yes. Mm. Tell us a bit about live, live a bold life in terms of the book. Patricia, tell us, uh, that's, that's coming out on the June the 18th. Um, right. Give, give us an insight, give us a sneak without giving too much away. Give us a little teaser. Okay. Well, so I wrote my first book, as I said, after I got that, that the book title when I was in France in 2016. And so that was all about how I was able to grow bold. Well, live a bold life, your 30 day mission to a fearless future is 30 stories of my first year in France and the insights I gained. And they're, you know, just daily occurrences, nothing spectacular. But in those happenings, you know, at four o'clock in the morning is when I usually wake up and, and start writing and I have those insights and I were connecting dots. I'm like, oh, this happened. And I'm like, oh, this means this. And so I would write these stories down. So it's 30 of those. And at the end of them, I have questions that the reader answers so that they can then fill in the intuitive affirmation that I have. It's a template with a couple of words missing so that they can create their own intuitive affirmation. Because one of the ways that I was able to grow bold was by listening to and writing out and reciting my own affirmations. And so when I say intuitive affirmations, it's really the affirmations that come from that higher self that knows where you're blocked that knows where your limiting beliefs are so that you can you know write those words in that are most meaningful and powerful to you so that you can you know have that fearless future so i'm really excited about it because you know as i've been editing and working through it i'm like oh yeah this is really powerful and each time i read it i think i can't wait for readers to get their hands on it so that they can have this transformation as well Brilliant. One of the things that we spoke around earlier, Patricia, two simple words, but immensely powerful. No regrets. Give us an insight into your world of no regrets. I think, you know, I was wondering why that has struck a chord with me, you know, because, you know, people have purposes and missions that are very different. And for me, why is, you know, having, helping people work through their fears so they get, they don't have any regrets. Why is that so important to me? And I really think it's just looking at my parents and how they lived. They had good lives. They, um, you know, they were college educated, the first in their families to be college educated. They were, were professionals. Um, they lived a good life. Um, yet, you know, I look at pictures of my mom and she never was smiling broadly. She'd have a smile on her face, but, but underneath that, I saw sadness. And, you know, when my father was dying in those final weeks, I also saw um, a sadness or disappointment or regret that he had not been more honest um, with his family and that he would not have the opportunity to show how much he was sorry for that and how much he truly cared for us. And so I think those, you know, the deaths of my parents and the disappointment or the regrets that I sensed that they had 
um, really got to my core. And so I think that that's why it's so, it, it's so important to me to help others not have regrets. Um, in terms of regrets that I have, I don't know. I think there are things that I look at life now as perfect. <laughs> you know, things that I didn't want to happen that happened, some of them, not necessarily all of them right now. I, I look back and I'm like, oh, now I see why that happened. That had to happen so that this could happen so that this could happen. And while I was going through it, it was pure hell. And I was cursing God. <laughs> but, you know, in hindsight, I see. And so my life has it's played out, even some of the things that maybe I, I, I'm not happy with still, I don't feel that those will be, will, I will regret those. It's the things that now I feel compelled to do or I truly want to do. And that if I don't do it, if I don't work through that fear to do it, um, then that's when I would have a regret. And, and that's not what I want. So on that no regrets theme, I think that nicely dovetails in towards uh, bringing things towards a, um, a finale in terms of this podcast um, conversation, Patricia. So my question to you on that is, what would be your epitaph? What would be your legacy? What, what was it all, you know, to quote a, a well-known um, song from was it the 60s, 70s, what's it all about, Alfie? Mm -hmm. <laughs> or in this case, what's it all about, Patricia? <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay, this is the question, I get it. <laughs> What no, way? it's not. Actually, no, it's not. This it's isn't? Not oh, no! <laughs> this is just a nice warm-up, a gentle warm-up. <laughs> That's all? <laughs> all right, all right. Um, what would my epitaph say? Here lies Patricia Brooks, who started out reserved, shy, uncertain, and died living a bold life. Wow, very concise, very powerful. Okay, so that does now lead us into what you just referred to as <laughs> the question. <laughs> and just as we flirted earlier on, Patricia, with this uh, closed scenario, um, kind of, you know, metaphorically tying you in a corner. I want to do the same again, and there's a reason for that, so please bear with me. But I want you in no more than two minutes, between one and two minutes, to think about and answer this question. What does speaking from your heart mean to you? Speaking from my heart means to me that I am sharing and being vulnerable uh, and in sharing and being vulnerable, I'm helping others to gain answers about themselves and their lives and how they can play the game of life more simplistically. Um, in speaking from my heart, it's a two-way conversation because when I'm speaking from my heart, I, I, feel, I feel good, but I also receive that the person I'm speaking to has, feels good as well, that they may not have come into the conversation feeling good, but when they leave it, they are changed, their heart is more open, they are more, more loving. Superb, absolutely superb. Thanks for that, Patricia. Um, okay, so we've, we've been on, I think it's fair to say, we've been on a bit of a journey here. We've kind of gone yeah. from metaphoric north, south, east and west. We've been all over the place, um, but I hopefully listeners will, will think that there's been some kind of continuity to it, continuity to it. So if people want to reach out, Patricia, to you and find out more about your book, you, your life, the work you do, where can, where can people get in contact with you? Well, they can email me at patricia at thecouragecatalyst.com. 
they can go to my website, www.thecouragecatalyst.com, or for more book information, they can go to www.30daysfearlessfuture.com. That's three zero days fearlessfuture.com. Superb. Patricia, I'd like to thank you for the, you know, for being part of this uh, interesting <laughs> and, and, and often humorous conversation. Uh, you know, sincere gratitude. It's been an absolute pleasure to be to have been uh, part of that. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much, and thank you for your your deep and thoughtful questions. <laughs> yeah, um, and so there we have it, listeners. Hope you've enjoyed that as much as uh, myself and Patricia have. And I just want, as I always do at the end, I want to leave you with this thought: that remember, whatever you're doing in life, always walk your path with heart. <laughs>